This is it. The Sarah Hall prototype that we've all been waiting for. But is this the super shoe that we've all been hoping for? Let's take the Asics Metaspeed Sky for a run and find out. Nine point six two miles, seven minutes fifty three seconds per mile, one hundred fifty six beats per minute today overall for the workout, which included six times four minutes on and three minutes off. Those four minute on phases being at right around between five k pace and ten k pace, which today averaged out to being around six minutes and twelve seconds per mile. A perfect test for the Asics MetaSpeed Sky. Now, before I give you my thoughts on this shoe after just this first test run, I do want to go over some disclosures. This is a pair of shoes that was sent to me by Running Warehouse and Asics for the purpose of review. However, they're not paying me to make this video or to use the shoe, and they're not going to get a chance to preview any of my footage or my thoughts before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. So with that disclosure out of the way, let's talk about the Asics Metaspeed Sky. Now, the first thing that we have to talk about today is the fact that Asics isn't just going to be coming out with one super shoe this year. They're going to be coming out with two super shoes this year. There's a Metaspeed Sky, which is this shoe, and there's going to be Metaspeed Edge, which will be coming out later this summer. Now, the reason for those two shoes is because of the testing that Asics has done. And what they're realizing at Asics is that they're identifying two different types of runner, what they're calling a stride runner and a cadence runner. And of course, we all have stride and we all have cadence. So what they mean by that is what happens happens to a runner when they try to run faster. And what ASICs notice is that some runners, stride runners, the first category, as they increase their speed, their stride length kind of disproportionately increases as a, that runner runs faster. The cadence runner, on the other hand, does something a little bit different. Each stride doesn't get longer and longer and longer to go faster. The amount of increase in speed is kind of like lin almost linear with the amount of increase in stride distance. So that's the two difference. And what ASICs believes is that each of those two categories of runners needs a slightly different kind of shoe when it comes to getting that maximum performance. The Metaspeed Sky is for that stride runner and the Metaspeed Edge, which will be coming out later this year, is for that cadence runner. While each of those shoes are going to look very similar, they're both going to kind of look exactly like this. but the Metaspeed Edge is going to have a slightly lower stack height, a lighter weight, and a different rocker configuration. Now let's take a look at some of the specs for the Metaspeed Sky, which is the shoe that I have with me today. The Metaspeed Sky comes in at 33 millimeters of stack height in the heel with a five millimeter drop, giving us 28 millimeters of FF Turbo foam. This is a nylon based foam that ASIC says is ultra lightweight and ultra high bounce. Also in the midsole, we've got a full length carbon fiber plate that ASICS has designed to reduce the load on metatarsal heads. Also in terms of the way that this midsole is sculpted and put together, there's a pretty prominent rocker up in the forefoot helping you with that toe off. And there's also a pretty prominent flare on each side, but they're specifically tuned, not just for aesthetics, but to help deal with the different compressive factors depending on the way that the shoe lands and compresses. So these flares are designed to help keep the shoe from crashing in too much on this compressive foam. Moving to the outsole, we're seeing a new rubber compound from ASICS. It's ASICS grip, it's not AHAR anymore. This is gonna be a little bit thinner, a little bit more lightweight, but it's specifically optimized for performance in wet conditions, not only in case it's raining on your race day, but also because a lot of times getting through those aid stations, there's lots of water on the pavement. So this ASICS grip is designed specifically for that. They did extend the rubber down further towards the back of the heel in this shoe because they did note in their testing that even for their pro and elite athletes when they're fatigued later on in the late stages of the races they are still hitting to some degree in the back of that shoe so there's plenty of rubber coverage to protect all that new 
FF Turbo midsole foam. Up top, we have a single layer mesh that is extremely thin, extremely breathable. I will say that it is a little bit uh, harsh. It's not the softest of materials. It's not quite as soft as the upper in the Meta Racer, and I did absolutely love that upper, but I do feel like they are saving quite a bit of weight, and I do feel like it's gonna be much better in really hot conditions to run in this material. Final fact about the upper though, the polyester fibers that are in the upper are made out of 100% post-consumer product, which I think is absolutely amazing and incredible that they're able to put this in the launch of a new super shoe. And in fact, it's part of ASIC's, it's part of ASIC's overall initiative to make sure that all of their uppers for their running shoes are made out of post-consumer product by 2030. This entire package comes in at a very lightweight of 7.0 ounces for a men's US size nine or 199 grams. So what is it like to run in the ASICS Meta Speed Sky? I'll tell you that this shoe is fast. I absolutely love running in this shoe. And referring back again to the Meta Racer that I ran in last year, it's delivering on a lot of the hope and promise that I felt when I ran in the Meta Racer. It didn't quite have the midsole material underneath it that I thought I could take it for the marathon distance. The Meta Speed Sky and that FF Turbo Foam is ultra lightweight, like ASIC says it is. It does give an ultra bounce. It's not quite as soft to me underfoot as an Alpha Fly, but it's also not as firm as the Adios Pro is. And I think that this shoe kind of fits right in the middle in between those two shoes in terms of kind of the way that the foam compresses and how fast the shoe feels underfoot. So going to my workout for today, it was very easy to get from my warm up phases and my rest phases right up to speed very quickly. The shoe is very flickable. The moment you think about going faster in it, you're going faster. And then as I was working harder, deeper into the repetitions for today, I felt like the shoe always had another gear that I could reach down and get into to get to additional speed. So working at very fast paces, at least relatively for me, when I was working hard, putting in a lot of effort, I felt like the more I put into the foam, the more I felt like it was giving it back to me. I didn't really feel like a super strong carbon sensation to it. I felt like I was loading the carbon pretty heavily uh, at those harder efforts for me. But as I was taking off and pushing off, I didn't feel like the carbon was really giving me a lot back. I think instead they're going for a slightly different type of roll through type of motion with their carbon fiber plate and also using that a little bit for a sense of stability. And usually when I talk about carbon fiber plates in a shoe like that, it also usually translates to a shoe that doesn't feel like it's very fast. But I think that this FF Turbo midsole foam, I'm just a huge fan of it instantly, I think is really delivering a lot of the speed and that sense of pop that I'm getting from the shoe. And the shoe has plenty of pop to it. I'm super excited to take this out for some different paces as well, to take it out for some marathon paces, take it some half marathon paces. I'm very optimistic that I'll be able to take this shoe for those marathon workouts and for the marathon itself. I'd be super excited to try that. But I think there's gonna be some testing before I can definitively say whether or not this is going to be that marathon super shoe, which was a big concern for me for the Meta Racer as well. This shoe, I'm feeling pretty good about it. I'm feeling really good about it, that I'll be able to take it to that marathon distance, but some more testing will definitely be required, and I can't wait for that. Some other things to note in terms of the fit on the upper, overall, I love the fit on the heel collar back here. There's just a tiny bit of a padding right here just below where it's gonna be touching your Achilles. The heel cup is, there's a little bit of structure in here, but it's pretty floppy. Overall, I really like what's going on in the heel and in the ankle. Uh, in the midfoot cage, plenty of lockdown in this shoe. The laces don't move. They stay exactly where you want them to be. It's a little bit of an effort to get in and out of the shoe, but overall for a racer, that's kind of what you want because you don't want these laces to be doing anything once you set them in. The upper is very breathable. Again, like I said, the shoe is basically see-through. It's hard for me to understand how they can have a material that's so thin and yet so strong and able to hold everything in there. I was getting a little bit of weird puckering on my left foot right here in terms of the, the fit. The right foot, I didn't notice any of that at all. And I did notice on both feet that the shoe kind of comes to a point very quickly. So it's a little bit narrow right at the top of the shoe. So I felt like the toes were getting crunched in just a little bit. Very common and very much of a racer fit, but I feel like overall the fit was 
a little bit less comfortable than the Meta Racer, but overall, definitely not a deal breaker of any sort, not anything that I haven't experienced before in other racing shoes. Moving to the outsole as far as this A6 grip outsole, I really liked it. I feel like there's plenty of rubber coverage, plenty of grip. I don't think conditions were too wet out there today, but at no point during any of my turns that I had to go through did I ever feel unsure. So I feel like this outsole is working great for me. Nice and grippy, very tacky. Overall, super excited about putting a lot more miles into this Meta Speed Sky. I believe the launch for this shoe is April 1st, so coming out very, very soon. I think a lot of people are really going to enjoy this one. Now, before I go for today, let's take a minute to talk about some of the other shoes that ASICS is going to be releasing. I talked about the MetaSpeed Edge a little bit already. That's going to be coming out in June. Hopefully, I'll be able to get a chance to test that shoe as well, especially putting them head to head to see really which one I prefer because as I was talking with ASICS, it's not so simple as like if you're a heel striker, then you're a cadence runner. And if you're a midfoot or forefoot striker, then you're a stride runner. So I'm looking forward to kind of understanding and teasing out a little bit more of that distinction and trying to figure out ways that uh, people can uh, identify themselves in terms of which one they should be looking at. And the last surprise announcement for me was that they're also coming out with a shoe called the Magic Speed, another shoe that we've been really hoping that ASICS was going to make for us and they've made it. So when I tried the Nova Blast last year, it's a super squishy foam, tons of stack height, great for long runs, easy runs. You can even really get up to speed in it because of the FF Blast midsole foam that's in there, I think has a lot of potential. And they use it in a super thick stack height kind of configuration. When I ran in that shoe, I thought, what if they cut down the stack height on it substantially and put a carbon fiber plate in it? They've made it in the magic speed. FF Blast midsole foam and at 29 millimeters of stack height in the heel with a five millimeter drop and a three quarter carbon fiber plate in there as well. It's gonna have guide sole technology in there like the Meta Racer. Really super excited about this shoe. This shoe is also, I think, gonna be launching on April 1st. So I think a lot of people are gonna be dying to get their hands on that shoe as well. So very excited. They didn't have any of that shoe in my size for me to be able to test at this point. So. Fortunately, I don't have that video yet, but hopefully that video will be coming soon. Hit the subscribe button so you can see it the moment that that video hits. So those are my thoughts on the three new shoes coming out from ASICS. Let me know in the comments down below if you have any questions or better yet, feel free to stop by the live stream that I do just about every day on YouTube, 3 p.m. Central Time. You can always ask me anything you like there. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of the video. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your own runs and I'll see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?